morning, I'm Catherine and today I'm in bed with another wrap up video. This is my January wrap up but I'm going to sell it to you as a May wrap up because I'm going to put it online in May. Maybe I'm going to put it online in June. I'm going to sell it to you as a June wrap up because honestly it doesn't matter for you when I've read those books and I'm so behind on my wrap ups. So just let's act as if I've read them in May, it doesn't matter. And Look what a beautiful t-shirt I'm wearing because I just was at L Beach Festival and my friend Jenny um, did like this. I looked the word up. I forgot it. Like where you can print things yourself. You have to put color on it and then you like do this and then at the end you have this. Whatever. <laughs> and um, Fun fact about this t-shirt. The first person who ever wore it is Laura Sack in my wonderful book talk and interview that I did at L Beach Festival, which I'm going to link in the corner. And now I'm going to tell you that I have read six book in this month that is actually January. And I'm going to tell you about four of them. So the first one is The Dispatcher by John Scalzi, who I really like. And I've listened to it as an audiobook, And I think all of his or most of his standalone novels and stories are read by Will Wheaton. This is a science fiction short story. I think the audiobook is about two hours. I don't know what this is in pages. And The Dispatcher is a job description and the dispatchers are called if there's some sort of accident or like when you have an operation in hospital and the operation goes wrong, the dispatcher can bring you back to life to that point where you were still okay or the operation didn't happen in that case so they can do the operation over and over until it works and you have to have a contract with this firm so the dispatcher will come and a friend of him who's also a dispatcher gets involved into a death that is suspected to be a murder and he has to find out what actually happens and as it's John Scalzi it's hilarious and also, the science fiction is interesting and I gave it four out of five stars. And why should you stop with one John Scalzi novel or novella or story? I followed up with The Collapsing Empire and it's about this stellar system like humanity has moved away or a huge part of humanity has moved away from earth and like the different planets are all connected via the flow which lets you travel faster than light speed and the different planets itself aren't able to exist on their own they are totally dependent on the trading with all the other planets and then it turns out that the flow may stop the old emperor dies, the new emperor has to deal with this, like his daughter has to do with this a new situation. And it's going to be a series. I don't know how many novels. This is the first one. And I'm very lo looking forward to um, reading or listening to the next ones. I gave it three out of five stars because there's a lot of intrigue in there. And that just got on my nerves on a few parts that I think it was a tiny bit overdone. But what I really loved about the book is that John Scalzi mm -hmm. takes apart religion completely. So there's this universal religion and it turns out that it's complete bullshit and that like when they founded the whole system, they just made up the religion because it fitted their political intentions. And I really loved that about the novel. The next one is Broken for You by Stephanie Cullors and I like this very much. I had some trouble getting into the story. It took me some time, but then I totally fell in love with the both women, with the characters and their friendship and how they change each other's life. And a topic that I like very much in novels as well as in films or TV shows is that you can make your own family and that's what's happened in this novel and I like that a lot. And last but not least, I read, also listened to, Quality Land by Mark Uwe Kling. 
Um, I went to the Chaos Communication Congress between Christmas and the New Year and he did a reading at the Congress and read some parts of the novel and I thought, well, it might, might, might be interesting. Thought it might be a little bit cheesy. It's a science fiction story um, set in a non too distant future that just um, plays out what may possibly happen if we continue the way we do now with um, companies collecting all our data and social media. And he does it in a very, very funny way, but in a very realistic way that you feel um, caught a lot of the times because you see your own behavior in there. And he also explains it quite cleverly, but did I mention funny and hilarious? There's like this one situation about the weather and do you, do you know that feeling that um, instead of looking out of the window what the weather is like, you just take out your phone and you look on the app and then you go outside and the app told you that it's not going to rain and you're astonished that it's actually raining. That happens to me a lot. I don't know if it happens to you. Um, it's stuff like this that also happens in this novel. There's also an artificial intelligence that tries to become pre president and he has like all the solutions as an artificial intelligence would have and nobody wants to hear them. And I thought that was very realistic, very frightening. But did I mention he writes it very funny. There's like breaks in there with um, advertisement and there's two editions of this novel and I've been told that the black edition that I have is the novel in which there is all the very, very dark and sinister advertisement and the white novel is the edition with the funny and bright advertisement, which I think is hilarious. There's just so many clever ideas in here and it's, did I mention it's funny? <laughs> um, so very serious stuff told in a way that you can relate to. It will probably not make you change anything which is said, but let's just hope that this artificial intelligence comes along and it decides that we humans are amusing and it will keep us on and find all the solutions to all the problems in the world and everything will be perfect. I'm not sure if I'm happy with everything I just said, but we've been filming for three hours now and my brain is just done. So I'm going to leave it with that. Oh, I gave it four out of five or five out of five. I think four or five stars. I forgot that. And that's it for this time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my rambling on. I'm going to stop now. Don't forget, support your local book dealer. Moin, I'm Catherine and today I'm in bed with Laura said. Hi. So we are here to talk about a book I love very, very much. It's called Tell the Wolves I'm Home by Carol Rivka Brunt.